Hello everybody, Gwen Campbell Mendes here and welcome to Gwen's Bookish Ramblings. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a book that was one of my absolute favorites as a kid. Uh, this book is by Veronica Tennant, who is a former prima ballerina with the National Ballet of Canada. Uh, the picture you see here is a Veronica Tennant, clearly dressed as Cinderella. Um, this is, of course, the old Cinderella that existed before James Kudelka got his filthy hands on it and made the variant of Cinderella that he uh, choreographed uh, for the National, which I frankly severely dislike. But that's an entire side issue and not really the topic of today. Um, Veronica Tennant was, of course, before my time. Uh, she was one of the youngest principal dancers of the company uh, ever. She was dancing with them in 1969, which is when this photo was taken. Um, so we're dealing with somebody who, to a certain extent, is also very much of the old school styles of uh, ballet training, which I'm given to understand have changed in recent years. So, today's book is a children's novel called On Stage, Please, which is written by Veronica Tennant and has pictures, um, the, a lot of really, really lovely pen and ink drawings done by a woman by the name of Rita Briansky. Um, I always loved this, this cover because it felt... It, it felt like a ballet class to me. It looked like somebody who'd seen a ballet class. And that sense of, of being in the studio, I always thought that, that Bransky really caught it very, very well in her illustrations. But what I really, really love about the book, about the actual text of the book, as opposed to just the pretty drawings in it, is the way that you can see how much of herself Veronica Tennant has put into this book. You can see when she speaks about the first ballet that our protagonist Jennifer ever saw, which would have probably been the Royal Ballet in Covent Gardens, how she sees the ballet from the outside and she wants it, and how much she wants it, and how she felt seeing these dancers do these incredible things for the very first time, and how that one performance that she saw as a child of Cinderella, which is Jennifer's favorite, though only ballet at that point in her life, how, how much that drives her. Um, you can see here, this is an illustration that is from early in the book, which is nominally of the performance that Jennifer would have seen of uh, Cinderella, with obviously Cinderella and the Prince. And as we progress through the book, um, you see the trials of being nine years old and knowing exactly what you want, and the way people, the way people will laugh at you just that little bit because you're nine years old, you can't know what you want. And that there's that slight undertone of irritation that comes because people think it's so funny that she's so eager for the letter to arrive, that she'll run home from school every day at lunch just to see if it's come yet. I actually was always extremely annoyed on her behalf because, well, to have somebody laugh at you just because you're eager so you're checking the mail as often as you can in hopes that it will get here now, that that you want something so very badly that you want to curl up somewhere and just imagine it and dream about it, and everybody just thinks it's funny. I, I remember having that sense of irritation when I was a kid, and I love how, how Tennant captures that bit, that part of being a kid where people don't necessarily take you seriously. But eventually she does not, 
not until after some misadventures with a very, very bad ballet teacher who does everything wrong, and it's described in the books in a really visceral way, showing up at at the studio of a bad teacher who forces the girls too fast, who tries to push them too hard, and who doesn't understand that things like turnout take time to develop and instead just orders them around and doesn't explain. And the way, the kind of heartbreak that that leads to is it's in the book, and you have that visceral reaction to it. But eventually, uh, she applies for and gets into what is a stand-in for the National Ballet School of Canada. We in Canada have, if I recall correctly, two major professional company ballet schools. That is, the Royal Winnipeg Ballet and the National Ballet of Canada each have an attached school, and it's a boarding school, and it's where you go to train professionally to be a dancer. It's not that you can't train professionally at other schools, but um, a majority of uh, ballet dancers tend to come out of these ballet schools run by the ballet companies. And so this is a stand-in for the National Ballet School, and what you see here in this picture that I've moved on to is what we in the biz would often have called conditioning. Now, admittedly, I was never a ballet dancer. I uh, took rhythmic gymnastics. But conditioning is where you work very hard and suffer the pain of doing the splits, where you increase your flexibility, where you do sit-ups and push-ups and build up your muscles, and it's very, very dull, and it's painful, and it's hard, and that's the real labor of being a ballet dancer, because it's very easy to see the point when you're standing next to the bar and looking at yourself in the mirror, and a teacher is telling you, hold your arm here because it looks better. It's a lot harder when you're lying, as these girls are, on your stomach, having to hold your feet up in the air for some unending period of time, just hoping that you can put your legs back down any second. And so we have this illustration here, and anyone who's ever taken dance will remember this, and remember being in that position, and remember just waiting, agonizing, hoping it will be over soon. Um, through the course of this book, uh, Jennifer has a very good friend in Danielle, who is 17 years old and coming up on her graduation. And uh, throughout the book, Danielle gives Jennifer these, these boosts that she needs, the reminder that of what she's working for and why she's working for it and how what she's doing works up to creating a dancer. And this is, of course, Jennifer practicing uh, in her off hours trying to get something right. And it's uh, the last picture that we get in this book before she sprains her ankle. And injuries. Injuries are part of being a dancer, too. And so she gets injured in this book, and she has to suffer the sense of uselessness and helplessness and something that I think in some ways only people who have been specifically and genuinely disabled may be able to understand, because when you're a dancer and you suffer an injury, you are prevented actively from doing your vocation, your avocation, which is dance, you have, you can't do it anymore. It's not like if you break your leg and you're a lawyer. If you're a lawyer and you break your leg, you still can still stump your way into court one way or another and continue doing your job. But she genuinely can't, and this isn't, this isn't just a job. It's something that she has to do because it's who she is. Because this is something that is also comes up in this book, that dancing is hard, and it's filled with sacrifices if you're going to become a professional, and you do professional-grade dancing because it's something you can't not do. 
And it's so made so clear in this book when in this one very poignant scene, after Jennifer has spent a whole class with her ankle hurting, not able to do what the other girls are doing, only able to work on conditioning and niggling little details, and looks herself in the eye in the mirror and asks, Is this really for you? Is this for me? And after a very long pause, she nodded because she had to to look into herself about that and in the end she gets the chance to to participate in a professional uh, performance um, Cinderella in this case stands in for what most children in ballet schools usually look for which is the nutcracker because of course every girl in the uh, ballet school wants to uh, get the chance to play Clara, and all the students want to be on stage um, with the company in the Nutcracker. In this case, Cinderella stands in for it, and Jennifer gets to be in, in Cinderella, and anyone who's ever been backstage at any stage production will recognize this, will recognize the last-minute blocking, the chaos of backstage, the way all of the set pieces and and and... Things are scattered around because everybody's still putting everything together. And if you look at this drawing, you can see the way it captures that sense of, of chaos. I love these illustrations in this book. I really, really do. They're just gorgeous. And we follow Jennifer through, through this chaos of backstage through the chaos of being there for the first time and not quite knowing where you're supposed to be, not quite knowing where you're supposed to go, not quite being sure of how you're supposed to get where you're going. And that it, but that in the end you have these brilliant little moments, like when you first see yourself, as she does here, in costume, made up and ready to go, and everything starts to come together. And, of course, this being uh, the triumph and final moment of final chapters of a children's novel, things do come together wonderfully. Um, and she even reaches a certain understanding with Maureen, who is that other person in class that I think everybody has experienced at some point, that person for whom everything comes easily. It may be that girl in ballet class who always does things right, um, which is what Maureen is in this book, or it may be just that kid in your math class who never seems to have any trouble at all understanding quadratic equations, and you just want to throttle them because everyone else is struggling, and why do they have to sit there just being so perfect? But she reaches an understanding with Maureen who freaks out because she can't remember the steps. And Jennifer is then able to talk her down and calm her down because she can say, let's go, we'll practice. We'll find somewhere. And, and I just love the sense of realism in this book because it all feels so true to life. It feels like you're there. It feels like the experiences I remember having. And you feel like Veronica Tennant is telling us what it was really like for her. The last illustration, and in the last minute of this video, we have, of course, the final performance. And there's Maureen and Jennifer. You can see them in the bottom right corner watching the first act of Cinderella. And the performance in the second act goes off without a hitch, and the girls do their dance, and they deliver their flowers, because at the end they're there to deliver flowers and the book closes out with a wonderful final statement. You danced beautifully. See you tomorrow night. And that's this book in a nutshell. And I love it. And thank you all for listening. And I hope to see at least some of you at some point again in the future.